Uh, it's fascinating you use the example of a movie. Top Gun, the recent release of Top Gun, had a lot of those attributes to it, too. Where, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the enemy was some nebulous, vague mm-hmm. other nation. We don't know who yeah. it is. With snow. And, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and by the way, the old Top Gun, the, the Maverick jacket that had the Taiwan and the Japanese flag on it, in the revised cut of the movie, that had disappeared. In the original mm-hmm. cut, you know, it was actually real. In the original movie, it was actually original version. Yeah. There was an actually identified enemy nation. We're talking about the U.S. And, and USSR, an actual rival. Here, it's some nebulous nation. Why is that? China's first read was that this movie was too patriotic for the U.S. to be played in China. So they come back and make those concessions. So part of that, that's that's micro. That's at the, mm-hmm. at, at the margin, right? Well, the Japan flag and the Taiwan flag no longer show up. It's a nebulous alternative enemy arrival as though it was disconnected with the present reality in the United States, made it slightly less patriotic Mm -hmm. than it otherwise was. Is it any surprise that you then see the same types of reactions from the same movie industry associations or recording industry associations that Mm -hmm. then are engaged in self flogging here in the United States, even as they will expand into the Chinese market without a peep? So, so I do think that there is a cynical force at work here, Ian. I think you're totally right about that. But I don't think it's the whole explanation. Mm-hmm. Right? That just amplifies a deeper insecurity that still existed in the first place. Yeah, I think the 